I feel like my thumbnail should be like, la. Yeah, I'll do this. Sure. So the Super Mario Brothers movie, it's out, it's been seen and reviewed by critics, it's been seen by some audience members, and man, that chasm, that contrast, that divide that we've seen before is alive and well here for this movie, and that makes me go, I'll do another video about that movie. So this is my spoiler talk for the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's not gonna be a play-by-play. -play. None of my spoiler talks are. Also, the spoilers in this movie are generally gonna revolve around Easter eggs that I'm gonna be real with you, I'm not gonna remember all of them, so just keep all this in mind. But we're here having a good time talking about things I didn't talk about in my spoiler-free review of the movie, so here we go. You know, the thing I liked about this movie is it starts out, like, it just gets going. Bowser in his floating castle just comes down on those penguins, and he's like, let's wreck some penguins. It's essentially the scene from the teaser trailer, takes the star, and now we know bad guys up to bad guy things, and now we're in Brooklyn, where the Super Mario Brothers is actually the name of Mario and Luigi's plumber service. They are the Super Mario Brothers. Don't lie that's actually some pretty good marketing. Also the song on their commercial is the intro song to the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which I don't even know at this point if that's a deep cut or just the logical thing to do. Probably both, but I feel like not everyone's going to get that unless you were there in the late 80s watching Punky Brewster and Super Mario Brothers Super Show back to back before you were late to the bus stop but you caught the bus on its way back. Unless that was you, I might be projecting. Point is, love seeing that song in here. But the Easter eggs in this movie, they started early and they did not stop. Again, bear with me, I'm not gonna remember all of them. I don't sit there with a little skadoodle pad writing down everything in movie screenings. Also, I'm not a dickhead with a notepad on his phone having his phone open during the movie. I was, right, right. I'll like being engaged with the movie. I go home, I word vomit what I remember for your enjoyment on the YouTubes. But yeah, I was like, whoa, punch out pictures. These super punch out fighters, pictures of them on the wall. Mario's playing Nintendo. Mario is playing an NES. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I try to watch my language in these videos that revolve around kids movies because I'm like, well, kids might watch these videos. Also, I'm not a dickhead, but Mario playing the NES it's the most meta shit I've ever seen. Move over anything in any Scream movie, Mario's playing the NES. Everyone else, every movie reference anything can enjoy the silver medal. This one kind of takes it. Also, you hear Charles Martinet in this movie. He is in this movie, just doesn't voice Mario. That is, of course, Chris Pratt. But I thought that was a fun little spin that they did. Where in their commercial, they have these really exaggerated Italian accents and they sound like Mario and Luigi from the games. And then cut to real life, well, real life animated. Right, where they were like, oh, is that too much? And Charles Martinet in his Mario voice is like, no, it's perfect, woohoo! Thing is though, you're dealing with Hollywood studios and all sorts of soulless life forms. So you don't, I don't know how that started or ended up. Could have been like, oh yeah, we have him in the movie because, you know, he's gotta be. Or the internet was like, why didn't you cast him? And they were like, uh, hey, can you just say this one line into the microphone? Fantastic, thank you. Here's five bucks. And now we can have that in the movie, fantastic. But I felt it played well. He's also credited as voicing Mario's dad as well. So, I mean, you gotta assume, well, he was always cast in the movie, but anyhow. But also, yeah, we see the Mario family and it does lead into, you know, Mario's on his hero's quest. He's the down on his luck, doesn't feel like he's a mountain to anything in life, kind of hero. Gotta know though, are their last names still Mario? Things to ponder. A thing that did crack me up in here in a world where I wanted to talk more about it, my spoiler free video, but I'm like, all right, just, just give the information. Is it enjoyable? Is it not? Let's go. Spoiler talks, I can take more time to talk about Bowser pining for Peach in his off time. <laughs> That just cracks me up. It cracks me up because every villain has these unflattering moments we just don't see on screen. We always just see them in their prime villain form. But in between, it's like, what's their in-between time like? And in between each game, Bowser is scheming and pining for Peach. He has to be. That's why history being written by the victors, I have my own fan theory that Bowser and Peach are actually the couple, and every game is you playing as the villain breaking into Bowser's house, stealing his girlfriend, and that's the end. Anyhow, yeah, what does this dude do in his off time? He probably makes weird little songs about Peach in his off time. I like seeing that because, you know, you think about, think about the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker. Right, generally when we see him, we see him enacting his master plan, bringing Gotham to its knees with a few drums of gas and a couple of bullets. But afterwards, just cracks me up to think at the end of the day, the dude gets home or wherever he rests, he has his little makeup wipes. He just takes the makeup off. You know, he's sleeping. Does he talk in his sleep? I don't know, probably. Right, we never get to see that with villains. It did kind of crack me up that we did this time. My favorite part of the movie, the thing I laughed at the most, probably Luma Lee. Yeah, that dark, depressing little Luma in the cage. <laughs> it's, I kept thinking like, dude, this is a kid's movie. There's gonna be some parents with their kids. Kids are gonna be like, what? 
what's that, Dad? And why is the little fire acting so dark? Parents get to try to evade the truth, but, or they can just be truthful and be like, that, well, that is what you get to become one day. That's what we all become after working 52 hours a week with no overtime working for the man. Enjoy your childhood while you have it. Yeah, Luma Lee was messed up. Show stealer. So when we're out there on our adventure, Peach, Mario, and Toad are like, look, we need help from the Kongs if we're gonna do this right. When we got to DK country, you start seeing what they're doing like, oh yeah, a Nintendo world. I'd, I'd actually love to see a Donkey Kong country movie. That'd be fun. And yeah, in my review, when I said there was a character that was cast, but I could have gone for the character sounding older and crankier. Yeah, for those of you who didn't have a Turing test to crack that inspired code, I was talking about Cranky Kong. Just Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong, I wasn't seeing it, wasn't feeling it. In a perfect world, Ed Asner, he's not with us anymore, so of those still here, um, Alan Arkin, I think would be a great choice if you're looking for cranky and funny. In the movie, he didn't have that back in my day kind of grumpy old man energy that Cranky Kong had in Donkey Kong Country. He just came across as younger and cooler, like he was Cranky Kong's brother with a longer beard. Definitely related to Funky Kong. Maybe he was Funky Kong's dad. Like cool hippie Kong. Maybe that's what they were going for because Seth Rogen voiced Donkey Kong, which again, I think was great in the movie. You know, Seth Rogen, he's on the record saying, oh, he just phoned it in. He's going to be lazy in this movie, but... I guess that's kind of the point. Seth Rogen phoning it in as voicing Donkey Kong was still perfect for Donkey Kong. Cause let's face it, Seth Rogen's a big stoner ape. I would imagine Seth Rogen has a weed hoard that's every bit as big as Donkey Kong's banana hoard. The Kremlings ever stole his weed hoard, I'm sure he'd have the same reaction Donkey Kong had when he came in walking in on his banana hoard being gone. Seth Rogen get James Franco, go on an adventure together trying to get it back from the Kremlings. Are they still friends? I, I don't know, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm talking about weed in a video talking about a kid's movie. Shocking, but it's legal most everywhere. If I was from Portland, I could talk about black tar heroin, but I'm not. I did call BS on that whole Peach beat the obstacle course in one try. It's this whole montage of Mario trying this obstacle course. Peach does it, yeah, but you know, you're like, okay, she's done this course before. And she was like, oh no, it takes everyone a few tries. And Mario's like, you did it once, didn't you? And she was like, yeah, I did it first try. That makes no sense to me. She's like, well, I grew up here. Yeah, everyone who's ever whiffed on an obstacle course that you've ever seen grew up on Earth where the obstacle course takes place. Just because you're in the world doesn't mean you're good at obstacle courses. Mario, if you can do the obstacle course, you're good enough to come along with me. I did that for your health. We need to know that you're not gonna die. Oh, Toad, you wanna go too? Sure, let's do it. Don't worry about the obstacle course. There are a lot of Toads in this world. You're very replaceable. Huh? What? Did like the obstacle course, but that's one of the things I had in mind when I was saying I could have gone for more platforming adventures, like real dangers out there. Again, the last act definitely has all of that. But before that, we have a Mario Kart segment, which doesn't feel like a Super Mario Brothers game. It's a Mario Kart game. It's a completely different game. He fights Donkey Kong. Again, not really a Super Mario game, but he also did an obstacle course. The obstacle course did have that Mario 64 energy, you know, because we're dealing with 3D environments. And so I, I did like that, but... It was still an obstacle course. It was a training course. It wasn't actually danger. Could have gone for some more Mario platforming peril where they feel like they're in danger. Hammer Brothers are coming after them and they might die. I did like how they dealt with the power-ups though. Something simple like a mushroom power-up would be so easy to be like, all right, we're just skipping past that. Mario's just normal size and that's all there is to it. Let's just get on with the adventure. But no, they're like, Peach is obviously 12 feet tall and Mario's about half that. Appreciated that Mario didn't like mushrooms. Kind of reminded me of the Popeye movie. There were things in here where I was like, oh, that's taken from this other movie. That one reminded me of Popeye. This iconic power-up that this character eats and becomes super powered. But in the movie, he doesn't actually like the food, but he's forced to eat it to power up. Right, Robin Williams' Popeye movie and Super Mario Brothers movie. Regardless, when he was picking all the mushrooms off his plate, I was like, same Mario, same. Mushrooms are. Awful. So then we have this Mario Kart segment. They get all the Kongs together and they're going on the rainbow road. And then they have a lot of resistance. A lot of the Koopas are coming after them. Like, all right, here we go. Now we're in a Mario Kart game, movie game. But this was a segment where I was like watching the movie, not nearly as fun as playing the game. In fact, watching someone play the game is also more exciting, but weirdly, I probably have that programmed into me. Got home off the school bus and neighbors would watch us for a couple hours while mom finished work and the dad, his name was Wayne, and he would play games. That's what he did, he played Nintendo. So we were all just glued, so watching Nintendo is actually 
it was fun for me. But whereas the Mario Kart segment, it was a cool thing. It was a fan service thing. It would have been cooler if they brought someone in who's like, hey, I helped out on Ford v Ferrari. I'll make this look great. I'll make this intense. Never felt like that. Never committed to being a racing segment. That would have been a pretty knock it out of the park moment to do that. Still, Peach's arch game is 10 out of 10. You all thought it, I'm just saying it. I'm not taking that out, I don't care, because truth is an important thing. So at the very end of the movie, after this huge bullet bill, Mario takes the bullet bill to the pipe, blows up, everything gets sucked into it, and essentially they all end up in Brooklyn. So Bowser, it reminded me of, of the 1993 movie, absolutely. Could have gone for Bowser being like, Brooklyn, my world! Oh, we don't wanna plagiarize. Dennis Hopper too much. That's when we have a couple of touching moments between Mario and Luigi when Luigi has the manhole cover and he's blocking the fire and he's telling Mario to go get the star. Great scene also made me be like, yeah, I know Mario and Luigi are so good together because Superstar Saga, baby. Also found it touching and sweet when Mario sees their commercial and they're saying, hey, we're the Super Mario Brothers and we're here to save Brooklyn. And he's like, what's the point of saying it? I gotta do it. What can I say? I like moments like that. I'm, I'm cheesy. I don't care. That was nice. So it's like, their commercial brings it full circle. Go get him, Mario. Get that star. And then they get the star. They're running through enemies. You know what it looked like? It didn't even look like a Super Mario Brothers game. It looked like Mario 35. I don't know why they ever took that away. That was so much fun. You have so many enemies on screen. You get that star and you're just annihilating them. Yeah, it looked more like that. Bring back Super Mario 35, that was fun. Long story short, the Super Mario Brothers, they saved the day. Bowser's little Bowser and he's in a cage. He's in a little Bowser cage. I believe that was one of the post credit scenes. Everyone, like we all knew that there was a, another post credit scene. You see all these critics in this auditorium. Everyone's theorizing, everyone's speculating. The whole time I was like, so why doesn't Big Boss Wart ever come back? Even a Mario and Luigi Dream Team, I was convinced it's a dream world game. Obviously, this is when Wart's gonna come back. He never did. But the Yoshi Easter egg, ooh, there it is. I get it now, a Yoshi egg as a Yoshi Easter egg released on Easter weekend with egg, right. Marketing genius, good job, Tendo, or Illumination at least. But it was like, oh, Yoshi's coming in. But in the movie, there was a scene, a quick glimpse where you see a bunch of Yoshis. I think it would have been more impactful if you didn't see a glimpse of a bunch of Yoshis earlier in the movie and the first reference of Yoshi was this egg that cracked and you hear Yoshi say Yoshi. Interesting observation. There have been three movies in as many weeks that have used holding up for a hero in their film. I don't know what you want to do with that information. Tetris used a different iteration of it, but still. Well, regardless, the movie had one job and that is to not totally suck. I walked out of the movie like I said. You always want a movie like this to be more epic. I wanted to walk out of this movie being like, this is the greatest animated feature film I've seen in about 10 years. But as it stands, it's an enjoyable time. At the very least, people seem to be coming out of the movie being like, I loved it. My kids loved it. And I want to see more from the world. And that's what this movie needed to do. It at least needed people to be like, hey, there's something here. I want to see more. And legitimately, I am saying, I think the reason this movie landed with people is Brian Tyler's musical score. There are a lot of gears at work to have something like this land with fans or nail the tone they're going for, but music being the language of the heart and soul, that was a big one. All right, so the Super Mario Brothers movie, have you seen it? What did you think about it? What's the next Nintendo property you wanna see adapted? Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.